Um, I, this is the silly. Uh, uh, can I curse or is do you, you, would you better prefer I fucking don't? curse? Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Hello, I am Kay Anderson, and you are listening to Lost Spaces, the podcast that mourns the death of queer nightlife. Every episode, I talk to a different person about a venue from their past, the memories they created there, and the people that they used to know. This week, we are joined by Erica and Paul from That Aged Well, a podcast that examines 80s, 90s, noughties pop culture through a modern lens. And it was really lovely talking to them. I always get nervous before interviews, and especially when I'm talking to two people at once who have such a good friendship. And even though they were finishing each other's sentences and volleying back and forth throughout the conversation, they didn't exclude me. So that's really nice. (laughs) God, I sound so pathetic. We met to discuss Vlada, a vodka bar in Hell's Kitchen, New York City, which was the place to be for a short while in the mid-noughties. But, you know, as is custom with this show, we also talked about a bunch of other crap. Expect to hear flirting tips, advice for how to avoid audience participation, and how to spot the signs that you've joined a cult. We should probably start at that age-old question for anyone who lives in New York City. When did you move to New York City? We moved to New York City on probably the exact same day. Oh, I bet. I bet yeah. we did. Sometime in August. August like 25th to 28th. Sure. 1998 when we were freshmen at NYU. Ooh. We were in the same dorm. Yeah. <gasps> so 1998. So the Spice yeah. Girls bubble hadn't broken yet. Nope. Nope. Britney was on her way up. Oh, Britney. Mm-hmm. Um, what was on TV then? Well, Felicity premiered that <gasps> fall. Oh, which was big. Felicity. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and she stayed in the fictitious version of our dorm. We lived on 10th Street and 5th Avenue, and that's where our dorm was named Ruben. She stayed in Kelvin dorm that was on... 10th Street and 5th Avenue. Yes, in yeah. an enormous palatial suite that did not in <laughs> any way resemble exist. anything. The shoeboxes any, you were living in. tenement shoebox we live in. <laughs> but so, so is it really like that in America then, where you have like a dorm... What's the, like, what was Scott Foley's? No, not Scott Foley, the other yeah. one. The RA, the resident. Yeah, age. yeah, yeah. Yes, they are utterly useless <laughs> in real life. They are not, the, TV and movies will have you believe yeah. that they are friends, that they are there to like assist you and guide you through the college experience. Yeah. Ours were there simply to make sure we didn't burn the place to the ground. Yeah, they are either on TV, they're either wise or hot. And I never had one that was either. Nope. <laughs> oh, no, I, I had, there was a hot girl. I had a hot girl RA one year. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I yeah. saw her once. Okay. <laughs> the real reason to do it is because you got free housing. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Is it like when someone yeah. does the first aid course so they can get paid a bit extra at work and right. by saying they're first <laughs> yep. aider? Ah, oh, okay. Exactly. Ah, so, so they just have complete disdain for you and keep their heads down when they're walking through the hallway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they don't want to deal with our shit. They yeah. have their own shit to deal ah. with. Yeah, they're like 19. Why are they in charge of the 18-year-olds? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's scary to put mm-hmm. a 19-year-old in charge. Um, okay. Agreed. So you moved in 98, but then when did you meet each other? Probably like a week a later. A week later? <laughs> oh, We okay. were in the same uh, drama school. Yeah. Uh, so we had probably at least one or two classes at the same time. Yeah. Um, I don't remember meeting you. Do you remember meeting me? I do remember meeting you. <laughs> it's the best thing to say to someone, isn't it? Like, I have no recollection <laughs> of meeting you. What, what? <laughs> you, just, you just seem like you've always been there, like a fungus. Like, like, a, like a soulmate, Paul, like a soulmate. <laughs> I do know. I know we met the first time because my roommate, Jesse, was in, in, in our theater school. There were groups, so we were separated into like groups. We were not in the same group. My roommate was in group with Erica, and you were coming over to uh, rehearse a scene with him. And he told me, yeah, Eric is coming over. She has really good posture. <laughs> and that was the identifying characteristic. And you know what? She does. <laughs> he was right. <laughs> I, 
that's the least interesting thing about me. Well, uh, well, well no, they're way less interesting. Yeah. Than me. Yeah, you're no, you're fair. pretty dull. Fair, fair, fair. <laughs> But so I don't think I'm getting a good uh, idea of your posture from here. Oh no, I'm hunched over this microphone like yeah. a, like a yeah. There we go. This She's, is my theater school posture. Exactly. Yeah. I'm now ready to play Ophelia, <laughs> mm-hmm. even though I'm twice her age at this point. <laughs> if only we were only twice Ophelia's age. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm older than the nurse in Romeo and Juliet at this point. Well, people died at 35 back then, so we're basically dead in Shakespeare or Shakespearean <laughs> terms. Yeah, keeping it chipper, keeping the conversation lively. <laughs> uh, uh, and then so, you, so Erica, you have no idea what your first impression of Paul was. Paul, what was your first impression other than double-checking the posture? I don't, I don't remember, like, because we met very briefly, and then we we were, like, passingly friendly, but we didn't really know each other for a couple of years, and I think we really became good friends when we did Edith's play together. That's right. Because we did a we did a two person play together, and I remember thinking that like Erica is one of those people that I you can take her into any situation, and you don't have to worry about her. She will she will fit in. She will be cool, and it has borne out for the following twenty years that like. <laughs> You know, as you get older, you tend to like shed friends. You just, you lose them, not for any bad reasons. It's just like you become, you know, whatever. And this one just sticks around. <laughs> She's always, she always makes the cut somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just with you like a disease yeah. that has no mm-hmm. cure. Like a soulmate, Erica. Remember we said soulmate. <laughs> yeah. I just remember, I remember um, the thing about Paul was he was so um, himself. In college, it, like everyone else was putting on a persona. It, there were so many people in our school, especially, who were like, uh, you know, I'm wearing a scarf and sunglasses indoors. I'm very important. <laughs> I, have my, I have my two-gallon <laughs> cup of coffee. I'm, I'm caffeinated and important. And you were never like that. You were always like no bullshit, authentically yourself oh. all the time. And very sweet and very... Um, just down to earth is oh, what I remember about that's you. That's very nice. Thank you. Aww. That has not, that's, that's not borne out. You've yeah, changed. sadly. Yeah I, yeah, I have, I have gone <laughs> steeply downhill. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Was there, did you like make any promises to yourself when you were moving to New York? Like, I'm going to be different. I'm going to be like a new version of me. Did you have to make any of those promises to yourself? Because New York is like kind of. Uh, yeah. Deal, I right? remember when, when I got into the theater program at NYU and I, I really wanted to go, but obviously it was a lot of money and like it was not guaranteed to bear out with a lot of money in return. <laughs> um, and I remember telling myself then, you're going to be poor for the rest of your life and you have to be okay with that if you go to this school. <laughs> so that was my promise to myself when I moved to New York. And then... I married someone who um, is fairly high up at Google. So that promise did not even pan out that well. (laughs) But I was prepared. I was prepared to be poor for the rest of my life. (laughs) That's a big sacrifice. That's amazing. I did not have that. that, I was like, I'm going to be a star. (laughs) Look out, world. Here I come. (laughs) This this university is just a formality on my way to stardom. It's a blip to Broadway. I I guess I'll grace NYU (laughs) with my presence. (laughs) Yeah, that was me. I was going to be a star. Mm-hmm. I was going to like take o- take on the world and mm-hmm. become like this, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of who the who the equivalent to me would have been. Patty Lapone. Uh, well, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Less talent, but sure. Well, I mean, low bar. I mean, let's get real, Elaine Stretch. <laughs> That's really where, that's where I was going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this all means nothing to me. Oh, oh you're, you're uh, we, should have, we should have said maybe Elaine Page. <laughs> the theater queens will get it. Yeah. Elaine Page is the one that was in chess, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And she was, yeah, so I know that. I'm pretty Elaine. sure the original Grisabella in London in Cats. Okay. Should we just keep throwing theater <laughs> trivia at you so you can feel like lost on your own podcast? <laughs> Uh, yeah, absolutely. Like I know Cats is a movie and a it's musical mm-hmm. and um it's about cats. Yep, these are all correct things. That, <laughs> <laughs> that that's where the facts end for me. Yeah. Hang on. Hang Fair on. enough. What do I know? Oh, memory, right? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Not memories. Correct. 
just a, a singular else. memory. Which is ironic because the watching the musical feels like you're having an aneurysm. Yeah. What, watching the musical <laughs> is something that I want to enjoy with the world. Like I want to, I want to take every individual person in the world and be like, let's just sit down and watch cats together alone in a dark room. So you can watch cats and I can watch you watching cats. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I saw cats when I was like 14 years old. Me and too. I actually remember having the thought of like, I don't think psychotropic drugs are going to be for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to do LSD and be okay with that. I saw cats when I was even younger than that. And then as a joke, went back to see cats in like my early 20s with a good friend. And I did not realize when I was a kid that the first act of cats end was with like a cat orgy. Like all of the cats start like humping each other on stage. And I had a friend who had done the cats tour and I texted him and I was like, "Does the is the end of the first act of cats just just a, a, like a pile of fucking cats. And he's like, yeah, that's, that's what it is. <laughs> Thanks, T.S. Eliot. Yeah. <laughs> but like, it's supposed to be that. Yeah. Or just, oh. that, that, that it's like the cats Maybe are I kind watch of this. pile on top of each other. And like, I mean, who doesn't like watching incredibly highly trained dancers <laughs> in skin tight uniforms rub bodies? Like that is universally entertaining. It's, I mean, yeah, I mean, it is a way to end an act, I Sure. Guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's like in sketch comedy, like when you don't know how to end it, just have them fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and then they fuck. <laughs> Definitely when you're doing improv. Um, so, so then you were in this show together and how did the friendship develop? Was it like a, yeah, we're ride or die or did it take a bit Well, we had a little... Not a dip, but just Erica graduated a year before me because you graduated early, right? Mm -hmm. So then there was kind of a year where we didn't see each other very much. And then we randomly joined the same like exterior theater group. Like we, I just walked in one day and she was there as well. And then yeah. since then it was together wherever <laughs> we go. <laughs> Nerd. It was ride or die. I, the funny thing is, I think the reason I don't remember meeting you is because it feels like you've been my like closest friend for ages. Like yeah. it just doesn't feel like uh, there was a moment in my adulthood when I, when you weren't part of it. Yeah. But I do remember you walking into that theater company mm -hmm. or and and seeing you. And what's funny now in retrospect is that theater company was a full cult. Oh yeah. It was a disaster. <laughs> it was a nightmare. And you pieced out early because yeah. you figured it out. You clocked them immediately. <laughs> and Dum Dum over here, it took me like a year before I was like, oh, this is a cult. I've joined a cult. And I remember being like, I was a good enough friend where I was like, doesn't seem great, but will you tell me what happened? I, <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah, I want to get all the gossip without having to deal with the crazy. Yeah. And so like when yeah. you say cult, do you mean like it was all around like one person's it ego? It was these or? two, I mean, batshit crazy, older, I, they, were, they weren't even that smart. You know, I feel no. so, I feel so stupid that I was like, I wasn't taken in because I knew from the minute I was there that this was all ridiculous. Yeah. But I was like, I wasted so much time with these two people. It was like an older, much older woman and her younger protege. Uh, they lived in the same apartment. They slept in the same bed, I believe, <laughs> although he was a homosexual. Yeah, a full homosexual. A full homosexual. <laughs> and she was like old enough to be his grandmother. Yeah. It is the creepiest, craziest <laughs> Harold and Maude situation <laughs> And these two decided one day to start a theater company and they bullied a bunch of genuinely very talented. Yeah. Like some of those people went on to like do really well uh, into like submission. <laughs> it's actually, you know what? No regrets. I enjoyed, I enjoyed, I enjoyed being part of that nonsense. Yes. <laughs> it, it, it gave us some good stories. <laughs> how fascinating. I was going to say like, how did she convince that person to be her protege? But I guess if you're getting free rent and a bed to sleep in. I mean, to be fair, the crazy was coming from hurdles. both sides. It was yeah. not, it wasn't, it was not a one-sided crazy. It was a unit of, of insane. Yeah. It was Norman Bates and Okay. So let's, let's, yeah. let, let's not stigmatize mental health problems. Good point. Because these people probably, um, it was about their ego and their. Very good point. Ridiculous. We, we should right? say when I say crazy, <laughs> I don't actually mean crazy. Yeah. I just just mean bonkers egotistical yeah to a level that is <laughs> oh see you see i yeah that's the thing like can we enjoy crazy in love anymore can we enjoy any of these songs yeah. because it's like oh hang on this is problematic <laughs> yeah. but like what what is the word that we replace it with bananas and is it bonkers, bonkers. bananas we enjoy bonkers yeah uh bananas um um wild I, I enjoy batshit yeah just just the word batshit without <laughs> anything else I think also like what you just did is good because you were like, I'm really saying 
incredibly like egotistical. Mm-hmm. Like not there's not a, 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 a pathology at play here. There's just an incredibly overwhelming ego. Yeah. <laughs> to the blacking out of everything else. And maybe that isn't mental health issue. I don't know. But like that's how I perceive it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Like, Sorry, we, I got us to a place where we're all like tiptoeing around. <laughs> okay. like, from the outside, I didn't mean I'm to. sure I should have, those people deserve some level of empathy, but from the inside, <laughs> fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> it's fascinating to watch though, isn't it? It it's is. fascinating, those kind of dynamics. Particularly when you people. can just keep sending your friend in to deal with it and then get all the juicy bits when she comes out. <laughs> Best way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if only she had a body cam on oh, or something with oh, <laughs> wasted opportunity. <laughs> um, okay, so where does Vlada come in here, and were you still in the cult at that time? <laughs> Good question. I probably was. I think. I think because so, uh, Vlada was. I don't know if 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 that happened. This happened for for you or anyone else. But like, I I feel like in my twenties, I went through like cycles of gay bars so like it, i would have a year where i would go to boiler room all the time then i would have a year where okay. i would go somewhere so vlada was one of those for me i somewhere around 25 to 27 i think and it was it was in midtown in hell's kitchen so 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 just to clarify yeah. so you you went through periods where you were like this is the bar and i'm going here every weekend yeah and then all of a sudden it was like oh this is boring i'm going somewhere exactly else. Yeah. Okay, cool. And it, it was it was it was one of those bars in that cycle. It was just it was a it was a little higher end than a, a lot of the others. Yeah. Like, like Boiler Room has a dive barness to it. Yes. This Vlada was not a dive bar. Yeah. Vlada it had a it had a lounge upstairs. Um Our Lady J performed there a lot, who uh now writes she wrote for Transparent and um Pose? I think Pose as well, like very successful. So we, we I had seen mm-hmm. her there and it was kind of themed as like a um, vaguely Russian theme. It was like a vodka bar. Yeah. <laughs> they had, what the thing I loved about Vlada is they had a, an ice bar. Like the yeah. bar was made of ice so that your drinks were always cold. And it was <sighs> always cold in there. Yeah. Uh, and you loved that. I loved that. Mm-hmm. New York gets like, so swampy and disgusting in the summertime yeah. that you have no idea how delightful a freezing cold bar is. Yeah. But like what about in winter? In winter, you're you're dressed warmly. <laughs> I know I run okay. hot, so I always I would always rather it be like fifty degrees in a room than eighty degrees in a room. I I would like it to be cold. So I'm always always cool. Oh, with that. can you translate that into Celsius? I was literally I, trying to do that in my head just what? now, and I can't. <laughs> um, I know. Wait, I think I, it's, I think. Why is it so confusing? We're gonna give like the, the craziest answers. We're gonna be like, you know, like a hundred degrees Celsius, <laughs> or like negative forty five Celsius. Obviously, that's how it makes sense. Um, maybe like twenty five to thirty degrees Celsius would be like warm. Pleasant, yes. <laughs> right? Like a sunny day, right? So that would be like. Wait, Eric is looking this up. We don't need to yeah. do anything. Er- Eric is cheating, is what she's doing. It's not cheating. It's using the tools available to her. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> friend. Thank you, new friend. Um, so w- w- I would say it was roughly 50 degrees in that bar of yeah. uh, Fahrenheit, which translates to about 10 degrees Celsius. <laughs> oh, fuck. But then you would fill this... it with people and it would heat up. So it okay, would just be right, super okay. cold if you got there early. And then it would like, like the body heat would just kind of, then it would be like okay. a normal room temp. Okay. Well, like, this is not interesting to any of us. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, let's really talk about this longer. Let's, yeah. let's tell this. Why story. does America And how did it feel this? leaning on the air? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Why does America insist on just not using the metric system? I don't know. <laughs> we are fuckers. That's we're, why. We're assholes. Bless us. That's the answer. Well, do you know, do, and do you know, the weird thing is, like, we measure everything here in centimeters and meters, mm-hmm. unless we're talking about height or someone's dick size. And then that just all goes out the window. Yeah. You would think for dick size, you would want to stick with centimeters because... More. Yeah, like 25 centimeters is better than... I have no idea. (laughs) Than three inches. I know that's not right. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and I don't know. Like, maybe it's like an American influence, like, coming back because... I don't know. Maybe, like, did anyone... Okay, so I'm being being honest here in this question. It's going to sound ridiculous, but... Before, like, online hookup sites and stuff, did anyone measure their penis? They have to have. I feel like everyone 
did, but it what they didn't have a um a a, a, a billboard system for it, right? They, they, there was no advert. There was no obvious place to put oh, it. Oh, okay. So you would know, but it wouldn't be like. You know, you wouldn't tell people repeatedly yeah, because you were trying jock to. Jock guy in them. Manchester, sixty nine, nine inches, baby. You know, like <laughs> something. Like- <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't base your entire personality right. on it. Yeah, <laughs> or you would, but no one would know that's what you were doing. Ah, <laughs> oh. yeah. So I was going to say, like, I think it's it's like an imported thing because, like, the majority of porn, at least at a time, was made in America, and they would have had to like talk about their penis size a lot. So maybe. Yeah. Everyone looking at video covers because they would buy VHS then. And also know. like, well, like oh. the influence of pop culture, like, isn't there an Aerosmith song? I whipped out my big 10 inch, like referring to like a 10 inch, a vinyl, but like the, the double, the double entendre, entendre is like, <laughs> I whipped out my big 10 inch dick. So like, maybe it's like, there's a like pop culture thing about, it's easier to get inch into a song than centimeters. So. It does. It does have, just fall out of the tongue bag. <laughs> fall off the tongue bag. Yeah. I'm now realizing because I didn't think about the fact that like porn, early porn was mostly American. Mm-hmm. So like, did everyone in other countries just think that John Holmes was like a normal American man <laughs> with his ginormous penis? <laughs> or you all oh. knew that was crazy, right? And, I, and by crazy in this case, I mean enormous. <laughs> well. um, I'm just going to look up John Holmes. No, and, uh, you two can just like, you can just uh, entertain yourselves. John for the next, Holmes uh, is a porn star from the 70s. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, w- who is known for his, I'm not kidding, I think it was like 12 inch penis. Yeah. Like, like supernaturally ginormous penis. Oh. <laughs> but also he was from the 70s. So you're seeing a very hairy man right now. Yeah. Is what you're seeing. He's, he's not hairy. What are you talking about? Oh, I thought I remember. So I only seen John Holmes once mm-hmm. in a film. But uh, but I, I remember him being very hairy. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> what was the film? Yeah. It was called Insatiable. It was <laughs> Marilyn Chambers' Insatiable. Mm-hmm. I remember watching it because it was like a classic. It was like people consider it a, a So absolute, you watched it for the art. <laughs> You're going to think I'm crazy, but yes. You did an episode on it, didn't you? Maybe we should. We should. It does not age well. It would be the most vagina I had ever seen in my entire life. It does not age well. There are no people of color in it. It was all white people. Well, I mean, but, but, but with a porn, that could be less problematic than having people of color. Fair. True. That Fair. is it. There's a minefield there. There's a dynamic there yeah. that we haven't really delved into. Yeah. But it's it's a, it's a considered like it's considered like one of the, like, you know how like Debbie Does Dallas yeah. was one? And Deep yeah. Throat was one. Yeah. Insatiable was another. Okay. Uh, and Marilyn Chambers was like the, um, for lack of a better like analogy, the Meryl Streep of porn. <laughs> like, <laughs> like everyone loved her. <laughs> and what I liked about her is when you watch her films, she's a normal looking woman. This mm-hmm. is not someone with like who who hadn't done any alterations to her figure, or if she had like. You couldn't tell. She just looked like a normal lady who really enjoyed fucking. And I appreciate that. (laughs) Fair enough. But did anyone look like they had enhancements in the 70s? Uh, Good question. I don't know. I'm guessing that was pre like like boob explosion of the 80s where everyone just had those enormous Mm. tits after a while. I find it fat like this is okay. So this is something I know nothing about and I'm just going to go on and on about it and you're going to have to humor me. But I find it fascinating that in the 70s, there was that period where porn was starting to be taken like seriously or something. Mm -hmm. Like... And it was and shown in like movie it. theaters and couples would yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. That's cr- that's amazing. Reagan ruined everything over here. The <laughs> 70s were on such a good, good tilt. And then Reagan came in and fucked everything up. I mean, not in the good way. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's just really like, because um, I was reading about Boys in the Sand, which was the takeoff of Boys that was in the Band. Joe right? D'Alessandro, was right? Is that Joe D'Alessandro? I it think. was someone. Yeah. It was it was naked men. Yeah, well, um, and, and really, what like, more do you need? <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, I was in as soon as I found out that information. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just watching it, like some people went to the movies to watch this, like in a like non ironic or like in a way that they weren't going there just to like suck someone's dick, and they weren't actually yeah. interested in the film. It was like, like slightly yeah. less seedy. Yeah, I don't know. Incredible. I appreciate the homeness, the being home now of pornography. <laughs> I don't know if I would enjoy it, like seeing porn with like a group mm. of people. It's possible that you might not, but I guarantee you there are plenty of people that would. <laughs> oh, of course. Fair, fair. I'm just here to like to talk. I'm just here to like for the folks who would prefer it at home. 
I, I see you. You're here to represent. <laughs> I kind of really appreciate the fact that if you wanted to get off in the 60s and the 70s, like you had to put the work in. Like now I can just like flip open my laptop and look at porn and I'm done in five minutes. But like then you had to like have intention to go out and like get off. Well, yeah. It, I mean, it, it required a little bit more planning. Yeah. And now it's not special anymore. You had to, you had to either <laughs> have like a magazine like mail to your home address mm -hmm. or you would have to find a place that sold the magazine that corresponded to whatever it is you yeah. wanted to see and like buy it in from a human being. I mean, when we were young, <laughs> the quest for porn that started whenever you started sprouting hair, like just to like kind of understand it to a certain extent, obviously there was a sexual component too, but like literally like it, it was like, we all knew like whose dad had the porn. Yeah, and we'd go to their house when the parents weren't home, and we'd raid the porn stash mm -hmm. of like the dad who did who had the porn. Yeah, the cool dad. The cool dad. <laughs> I mean, now in retrospect, the lonely dad. But sure. <laughs> Isn't it funny how, like, little got you off? Like my parents had like a joy of sex book, and there was like like one picture with one full, picture, full, full, and you're like nudity in it, and it's like, oh yeah, I could just look at this page all day. There's and now it. it's yeah, like, like I need something new. I need something new. Exactly. And did that joy of sex book have something that corresponded to what you were into, or were you looking at like heterosexual? Just, no, just a scientific bisection of a penis. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. The Da Vinci yeah. painting uh -huh. of the man. <laughs> that was all we had. There was a, we had a Huckleberry Finn book in my house, and I don't even remember. There, there's a scene in Huckleberry Finn. I don't really remember it, but where there's they're like seeing some like circus or something, and like they're seeing and it's like a, a performer. Circus? No, just like a normal circus. <laughs> seeing a performer like dressed up as like a half animal, and he's performing. And there was this copy of it had a drawing of the guy that and he was naked and he was like it was from behind he was on all fours and like you it looks like he's kind of like running on all fours kind of so it's an action shot and you could see like the shadow of his balls and the <laughs> illustration Wait, do, do, and this was a half animal half man it, it was like but it was it was a full human that had been made up with makeup okay. and stuff and costuming okay so this isn't your story about how you got into bestiality then it is it's, this is not me coming out okay, as a furry okay, okay. This is, this is, I was going to say this must have in some <laughs> yeah. way influenced you though. but I remember like I bet if you went home and took that Huckleberry Finn and like you know how you if you let the book drop open it'll open to the <laughs> most open page I bet you it would go because I remember being fascinated by it like even before I had fully like sex was sexually fascinated by it just being like something in my brain being like i'm very interested in those plums i would like to know more about the plums <laughs> <laughs> and so would that page have weird stains on it no i mean this was before like i think i think i was literally pre-sexual when i when i discovered uh. this and then once i was sexual then like you know Imagination could get could get you further than a than a shadowed illustration of a ball sack. I mean, because <laughs> the problem with relying on like someone else's porn that you find is you're now seeing what they're yeah. into. So what they're into sort of de facto yeah. becomes part of you. What What are my brother's playboys going to do for me? <laughs> yeah. nothing. Very little. Very little. Well, so I, I feel like Erica, you might have a story about your friend's dad's porn and how that's influenced mm. you. That's a good question. Um, what, he was very, um, he, th there was a variety. I remember mm. that. I, like the man had so much pornography. He was, he was a single dad, I should mm -hmm. mention. Like, so, you know, mm -hmm. not, not much time for dating, I imagine. Yeah. And uh, uh, so, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. I couldn't say for sure that his his porn influenced me that much, except the idea that like, oh, you can keep a ton of porn in your house <laughs> as an adult. That's something you can do. You can just do that. Is that what your spare room is for? Your apartment <laughs> that you won't let me go into? <laughs> and that is how I got my sex dungeon. <laughs> um, okay, so ice bars and condoms. I don't know how we got here, but we did somehow. Um so do you remember the first time you went to Vlada? Uh, I don't remember the first time I went there. I feel like I went there, like I said, like a bunch over that year to two year period around to 2005, 2007, probably. Um, Erica, do you remember the first time you went? Uh, it was your birthday. Was it, was yeah, it my that birthday? Was the I had never okay. gone there. Um, it, it wasn't like that it was tucked away, mm -hmm. but it was on the second floor. Well, it was a, there was two floors to it. 
That's what it was. Yeah. And so I think I'd probably walked by it a bunch and didn't clock that it was a gay bar at all. Yeah, it wasn't like hugely obvious. And so I just thought it was like a vodka bar. And okay. I'd never, I'd never been. Yeah. And then for my, let's say, 25th birthday, uh, there was a drag queen there that was performing. And I saw this drag queen was performing. And this was a pre-drag race Bianca Del Rio that was performing. And I think I had seen her before in a different bar. You had because you had told me about her. Okay. And I liked her and I was like, I, okay, this is on my birthday. I'm going to like, this is where I'm going to have my birthday this year. We're all, all my friends are going to go. We're going to see Bianca Del Rio, who's so funny. Um, so we went there and she was, she had the, the upstairs was like a lounge, small performance space. Mm. So, um, so she was up there performing <laughs> and first, I think she interacted with you first. Yes. Yeah. So we, we are there as a group. It's a, it's packed. There are yeah. hundreds of people in this room. She could have picked on anyone. <laughs> <laughs> just want to say. So she gets on stage and she's she says, uh, I, I don't remember how she starts it, but she's like, I'm going to bring up some volunteers, but I'm going to call them out. They're not volunteers. And I, was like, <laughs> and I think I was like sitting on a couch in a corner. I could not have been more tucked away. <laughs> and when she came, she's like, I saw this girl when I came in. She looked like Velma from <laughs> Scooby-Doo. Where's Velma? Velma, are you here? I know you're in here, bitch. You were wearing glasses. You had, you had a, a black and white shirt. And I was like, Oh my God, she's talking about me. <laughs> and so I, I like got up off the couch that I was sitting in in the corner and I was like, is it, is it me? <laughs> and she's like, yes, get up here, bitch. <laughs> and I go, okay. So I, I'm like, I'm game. It's my friend's birthday. Yeah. How, how terrifying could this be? Could this get? You can put Erica in any situation and she is okay. This bears out my er earlier <laughs> statement. <laughs> And then she volunteers another girl to get up there, yeah. a, a, a tourist. Volunteer, I love that. As a that was some portmanteau. <laughs> I don't know if that was intentional or not, but very it was, good. It was. <laughs> she like she drags up this tourist who I English might have been her third language. <laughs> this poor woman probably wandered into that bar and was like, "What is what is that? What <laughs> is this America? Is this what's happening? Where are those twelve inch dicks? I was promised. Yeah, uh, exactly." <laughs> <laughs> And then she has the two of us lip sync against each other to Black <gasps> Velvet by Alana Miles. <laughs> but like you uh, just, uh, did she know this so song? Here's, here's how I know fate is a thing. <laughs> here's how I understand that the, that there is a universe with a purpose in it. Sure. Because even though that song is way before my time, mm -hmm. I fucking love Black Velvet. It's a great song. I've probably listened to it a thousand times. I know every lyric. Mississippi in the middle, middle of, of a dry spell. spell. Oh, yeah. And then what happens? Because I know that line as well. Then what happens? Kenny Rogers. Kenny Rogers. Troll up high. Oh, God. I need to listen to this. Yeah, okay. <laughs> And obviously, this other woman, this poor tourist, was like, I, "What happening? What's happening? <laughs> what, I don't." I'm just gonna sway. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think I feel like you know when you're you're kind of embarrassed, mm -hmm. and you're like, "Okay, I have two options here. <laughs> I can I can run and hide. I can mm -hmm. like fight or flight, right? Yeah. And, or I can lean the fuck into this. Yeah. And just." be a part of this situation. Yeah. So I decided this, the latter. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to give a goddamn performance <laughs> of Black Velvet, the likes of which this bar has never seen. <laughs> yeah. And I luckily I was wearing layers. I had like <laughs> a like a kimono top on top of like a, yep. a, a tank top. And so I like started taking layers off. I, I don't remember. It was like a blackout. There was at one point I was like swinging my shirt. I think I threw it into the crowd. I don't know. Yeah. And Bianca Del Rio, at one point I looked at her and she had this look on her face of like, bitch, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Erica, uh, look, she's being very nice by saying this other this other woman competing with a tourist, didn't know English, didn't know the song. If this had been a drag race lip sync, it would have been gone down history as Erica opened up her mouth and swallowed the other woman whole. <laughs> <laughs> she was she was on the ground. She was wearing a bell sleeve at one point and was like gesturing up. At, I mean, it, it was you would have thought she knew it was happening. She had a routine ready. It was a blackout. I don't really remember that much. Uh, and and so Bianca was actually just looking threatened. And the following week, you had her gig. No, 
it was more confused. <laughs> it was more like I had an intention of bringing these two women up here to kind of mock them. And now <laughs> I can't mock this because it's so sincere <laughs> that I'm just going to seem like a monster if so, I mock this. I think what you're saying is you have successfully rendered Bianca Del Rio briefly speechless. I will say this, and this is this is not her brand mm-hmm. at all. So I, I hope she doesn't mind me sharing mm-hmm. this. But Bianca hugged me afterwards mm-hmm. and said, that was amazing. Good job. Yeah. Aww. And I was like, thank you. And you have been dining out on that for 15 years. And then I saw her on Drag Race and I was like, oh, that was that was a moment. She doesn't say that to anyone. <laughs> yeah. She meant that. Yeah. Yeah. So Erica had that with Bianca that night. And then I don't know. I think maybe she asked you why you were there and you said it was my birthday. Cause yes. Because then she pulled me up on stage <sighs> and just started reading me for fun and profit, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I really remember about it is that she was like, I was wearing like a a green shirt and she said something like, oh, you think green's a good color on you? And I was like, yeah, I like green. And she was like, no one's going to fuck you. <laughs> 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 and and I was like, oh, and then some very nice young man in the crowd that I did not know was like, I'd fuck you. Which was nice. It was, that was nice. Yeah. So whoever that was. Thanks. That's a community. That's, <laughs> that's what's having a community. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, can we talk about yeah. performers picking on the audience? Because for me Oof. as an audience member, that is the most terrifying thing ever. Where is it on your scale? Yeah, I hate it, obviously. Who, yeah. who likes it? No one, yeah. Oh, right? no. There are some people who are like, yeah, I want to be the center of attention. Oh, I suppose. If I go to a show ahead of time knowing there's audience participation, mm-hmm. I like I, I'm like sweating before I even get there. I'm <laughs> right. already sweating and panicked. And I try to make myself seem as small as possible so that I won't get And see this is yeah. well, see, this is what I was gonna ask. Like, what is the right tactic? Because if you're avoiding eye contact and trying to be as small as possible, that might make them pick you more rather than if yeah. you're uh-huh. just being confident. Like what is it about the audience that performers hone in on? I think you have to be unmemorable. That was Erica's problem. When she walked in, <laughs> Bianca Del Rio looked at her and said, Velma from Scooby-Doo. So like, <laughs> so she was like, that is a good hook, right? You have That's to be- funny, yeah. Yeah, like it, it, it's the perfect time to be a cisgender, straight, white guy who's five foot 10, where they can't, <laughs> they can't find the, 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 the one rainbow colored guppy in the school, right? Like they have to- you have to be generic. And I think that's the way to avoid it. Like, because if you start acting, if you really start making it, then they that draws their eye, right? Or if you're like, ooh, me, 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 that draws their eye. But if you're just like sitting there calmly, <laughs> maybe, I don't know. I feel like you have to wear like khaki pants <laughs> and a blazer. Mm-hmm. And uh, you have to look like you're there to sell them a, a whirlpool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> or do their taxes. Yeah. Oh. Hi, my name is Keith. I've been a CPA for 15 years. Where do you hear my story about the tax audit of 2017? <laughs> like that's that's the energy you want to give out. <laughs> the I will kill a dinner party energy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. I think I mean I think I can achieve that. So next time I go out, that's okay. what, you know, that's, what I'm going <laughs> that's the goal, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's the absolutely. goal. <laughs> um so what was it about Vlada that that made it become the hot ticket for, oh God, I just said hot ticket. That's ridiculous. The the, the <laughs> place that you went to for, for that year. Um, well, I think, so in New York, there's different, obviously in different neighborhoods in all cities. Um, but like, like one of the bars I mentioned before, the boiler room, that was in the East village. So that was like a divey bar, kind of like, you're going to get like a little more, um, artsy uh uh grungy kind of feel to it yeah and then like if you go to the west village then you're getting like a slightly more mature gay like that's kind of a tr- very very traditional gay I feel place like the money goes up a bit also the money goes up a bit in the in the in the west village and then so i feel like vlada in hell's kitchen you're kind of getting the like hell's kitchen it's kind of like chelsea where you're getting like the 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 hottest and the stupidest at the same time. <laughs> so like when you're in your 20s, you're like hot and stupid works mm-hmm. <laughs> for now, right? You're not worried about long term here. I just want to look at hot dudes. And I feel like that was a really good spot for like, I- I'm going to see some very generic looking attractive men <laughs> in Vlada, which, you know, in your mid 20s, you're like, okay. Yeah, that's what's so, on the menu. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so hang on. So the entire reason that you went there was to look at men. Yeah, talk to them, like, you know, 
my good friend Adam was who I went to most of these bars with. And we used to tease each other that like, I, I love him. He's one of my best friends in the world. And we would be like, we would be like, we have to stop talking to each other because no one else is talking to us because they think we're on a date. So we have to, we would have to like turn around and face away from each other for like, okay, turn around for 15 minutes. Let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> who would pull first, you or Adam? You know what? It was, it was a, it was a dice roll each time. We, we, I think we both had our nights where we, you know, we got, we got it done. <laughs> See, because I hate that whole thing about like hitting on people in clubs and like starting conversations yeah. and being like, hey, I'm really interesting and mm -hmm. I'm going to like win you over in 30 seconds. Totally. Um, how do you resist the temptation to just run back to your wingman and be like, I hate everyone. Let's just talk to each other. Oh, I was not, I'm also was not good at that. Again, we would turn around for 15 minutes and then just turn right back around. It was like, it was a contest to make sure that, okay, you have to like. Force yourself. Be, I think what we. Yeah, exactly. Like, 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 try. Like, you're here to try to. I mean, I'm joking about like I'm only there to look at guys, but I was like trying to find a boyfriend or whatever. And like, you never know, right? And it was kind of before the big advent of like online dating and stuff. My my husband. I got together with my husband before I had a smartphone, which he will happily tell you disgusted him when he saw that I still had a flip phone when we started dating. <laughs> so I've never had like any kind of like grinder profile or anything like that because I was with him when that all. Came up so you just don't understand modern gay culture? Not really. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of like in I'm I'm a I'm an oldie. Oh my god! So you don't like advertise how many inches your dick is online? I have never. I'm not gonna say never. I've never had a, an online profile where I had any naked photos of myself on it whatsoever. Is there no, there are no nudes of you anywhere on the internet? I think my husband has some nudes of me, but those are not on the internet. Those are on his private devices. <laughs> wow. Can I just, um, I probably shouldn't be sharing this with you. Someone got in touch with me on going to the other day and said, someone's taken your nudes and put, and put like posted them online. And I was like, oh shit. And then like, I mean, I wasn't really that bothered because my nudes, um, don't have like my my face in them or anything so like it's right like, mm -hmm. it doesn't because you're yeah. smart and you're so like, it doesn't really yeah. matter like they they put pictures of my face mm -hmm. and then pictures of me nude and um and so it's just like well you know yeah that could be anyone mm -hmm. so like so at first i was like okay well i'm gonna have to like report this because it was on twitter and i'm gonna like say that this can mm -hmm. you take this down blah 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 and then after that i was like hang on did anyone like these pictures? <laughs> exactly. And so, did, and did so I they? went back yeah. and looked and like, I mean, the profile wasn't a popular profile or anything, but I had five love hearts and everyone else had nothing. So I was like, yeah, so, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Take, take the win. <laughs> <laughs> take the compliment, yeah. I say. Um, okay. So I made that about me when I shouldn't have. So you were flirting. With no. no, if it's about like naked pictures, please. Don't <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're very oh, what, So we're, we're not going to spot pics at the end of this conversation. <laughs> oh, no, no. We can oh, yeah, that's we are. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so flirting. Mm -hmm. I do like to find out um, from people what their techniques were. Oh, okay. I believe that I was a good flirter if someone else started the conversation. Ah. So I was very bad at the initial approach because, like you, like you said, it's 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 very awkward mm -hmm. and it's very. Um, unnatural like no matter to, to go up to a stranger and be like hi my name is paul like like i think you're attractive like it's hard to do that smoothly <laughs> <laughs> um but once the conversation was started i was able to do pretty well because i could i i could kind of you, you know you can banter i can banter exactly i can you know what i i i've seen you banter and mm -hmm. i can confirm that he is very good at flirting oh thank you, yeah. thank you. <laughs> what would you give him out of 10 though <laughs> yeah, rank me. What if I gave you like a seven? You'd be like, bitch, what? What did I Interview's do? Interview's over. I'm going to cry. <laughs> You're like, well, your flirting was good, but the face, you can't fix the face. <laughs> you can't fix a fundamentally broken person. But other than that, great job. You did well with what you have. Um, no, honestly, nine. Nine oh, out of ten. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, I netted myself a fair number of dates from the bars. And I, I think. Honestly, like the theatrical training kind of came ah. in because it was like, it becomes like a, a bit of a performance. No one is being themselves mm -hmm. when they're meeting someone the first time and you're flirting, you're trying to present the best side of yourself. So what I would notice is that people like who were more nervous or 
uh, less um, adept at that kind of thing, they would like stop smiling and they would um, they, they would make a joke and then immediately apologize for uh, making a joke. Oh, that's so sad when that happens. And like, or, or like make a joke and then say, I'm just joking. <gasps> oh, I hate like, that. Like th- those, yeah, like the, the anxiety starts to take over. And, and I, I think what I almost always had going for me was that I had a friend at the bar with me. I wasn't alone and I was, I'm comfortable talking. So I was like, I'm going to have a conversation with this person. If it doesn't go well, my friend is literally five feet away. I'm just going to go talk to them and I know I could talk to them. So the stakes were lower. So I think that's the key to flirting. But if you totally bomb with someone and then you're continuing Mm -hmm. to be in the same bar as them, like that's kind of awkward, Mm -hmm. right? It is, but I just want to get myself wrapped around the axle. I mean, <laughs> I'm going to sound like such an asshole. I was going to say, have you ever bombed though? I don't, I, see, I don't, I think, don't think, think I've, I've never what is being felt wrapped around the axle? like I bombed. Oh, it means like um, getting, going into like a spiral around something. Like, like this thing is dragging you down. I can't <gasps> oh, shake okay, this off. Okay. So I, I can't think of a time where I, like I think of many times where like a conversation didn't. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah pan out uh, but but like i never have left it one of those situations feeling like oh my god i i accidentally made like an anti-semitic comment to a jewish person or something <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and like like i i have i have deeply offended this person and no i, I did it intentionally like I, i've never <laughs> yeah, exactly. i made a good joke and for some reason they wouldn't laugh and that, i don't understand so i i i think flirting for me like if i was in the right mindset i could actually have a good time flirting and talking with people because I would it, uh, low mm. stakes and like, what's the worst that can happen? Mm. I don't go on a date with this person, which I wasn't going to do 15 minutes ago before I met them. So like, it's really, I'm not losing anything. And then that kind of weird confidence that apparently I have where I'm like, I've never bombed in a conversation once in my whole life. <laughs> do you want to hear a funny story about <laughs> some of the worst flirting oh, I've yes. ever been on the receiving end of? Oh. Yes, please. <laughs> you know this story. I do know this story. It's a good one. I went I, I went on a couple of dates with this guy. I actually met him in a bar. He approached me. We flirted. Went on a couple of dates. He was a very nice person. Oh, no. That he me- was not for me. Never call someone a very nice person. He... <laughs> <laughs> no, there's, there's, there's nothing more damning. <laughs> and he he had called me. He had... he and and I And I was very like... If someone approaches me in a bar, I'm going to be nice to them. Like it, when I was, when I met my husband on like a dating, on like OkCupid dating website. If someone like came to me and emailed me a nice email, I would always respond to them. Cause like that takes guts to do it. And I don't think you should be an asshole to someone who's just trying to say, Hey, I think you're attractive. Like there's no need to be an asshole. So he, he had pushed me in this bar. We'd flirt a little bit. I wasn't super into him, but then he was like, Oh, let's go on a date. And I was like, what have I, again, what have you got to lose? Just go on the date with the guy. Like, you don't know what's going to happen. You go on this date it wasn't good. I was, and I said, I was like, I, you know, I like, I, I, I had fun, but like, I don't really think this is, this is a romantic, has a romantic future. And he wore me down to take a sec- get a second date with him. At which point I was like, my God, man, have a little self-respect. Like I've told you I'm not interested and you're not letting this go. Like, so I was, I finally was like, okay, fine. We'll, we'll go out again. So we go out again and we're in a bar, a different bar or in gym bar <clears throat> in Chelsea. And I had just done a short movie, a short film, and the trailer had just come out. And this guy, he was so sincere in everything he said. It was not, he wasn't snarky. He he was so sincere, but it like, I, it was so uncomfortable because he was like, can I see the trailer of the movie? On, I didn't have, as we know now, I did not have a smartphone <laughs> at this point, but he had a smartphone. And I was like, yeah, it's, it's it's the name of this. You can find it on YouTube. So he looked it up and he watched it. And again, this didn't like a, a noisy, dark bar, right? So like, how can you really see anything on your phone? And he looks up at me and he says with complete sincerity, do you know how in the country you can look up at the night sky and you see all of the stars and in the city you can't see any of the stars because of the ambient light. Well, you are a star that I see in the city. <laughs> and then you got engaged and now you're married. <laughs> and, and that is my husband. And I like, it, it was so sincere and it was, it could not have been the more wrong thing to say to me. I want it. It was like, I became a turtle and like went into my shell. <laughs> it's like, 
<laughs> How long into the second date was this? Is this like we had had dinner? This was after dinner. We were at a bar. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. At least I'm I'm picturing him doing this like ten minutes. In. <laughs> No, no. I, like appetizers arrive just as he's like, you are one of the stars in the firmament. <laughs> but it's also like, that's not something that you just like come up with. I think he practiced that beforehand. It, he ha- like, Exactly. And, and it, it, I truly believe in my heart he meant it to compliment me and to flirt with me. But it was... A boner It killer. was like, you're not, you've been, a, yeah, you, you've been on a date and a half with me and you still think this is something that you should say to me. Like, I am not a super sincere person. There's a lot of sarcasm coming out of every pore of me all the time. Like, it, it feels like you're not really listening to who I am if you're going to say this to me. <laughs> no, this sounds like a, like a, a hopeless romantic. Yeah. And there is someone out there for this person. Yeah. But th- but it is not you. <laughs> <laughs> um. So w- what we haven't talked about yet is uh, Erica, oh. your flirting style. Yeah, I want to get some tips from you. Uh, I uh, am. Sh- mm, it's a little. I'm trying to remember because honestly, it's been a minute. <laughs> not gonna lie. Um, uh, but I feel like I always remember you inviting people on hot air balloon rides as your opening line. Is that not <laughs> accurate? I would just go to the bar and lift my shirt up and say, "Anybody, yeah. takers, takers." Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I feel like oftentimes I was too shy to initiate, so. I don't know if I've ever initiated in my life. Maybe mm-hmm. I have a couple of times, but it, if so, I would have been inebriated to the point of like, okay. Let's <laughs> or you do would have this. just come off this stage from a black velvet lip sync, and your endorphins <laughs> right. were like up to the roof. And every gay man in that place was like, "I would sleep with her. <laughs> she's she's my hall pass." <laughs> Uh, and so, so usually someone starts flirting with me and I just try to match their energy as best I can. And I, it's weird because I, this may not happen to men as much as it happens to women, but I immediately go to humor and try to be like clever. Mm -hmm. And, but then a little voice in my head says, men don't like that. (laughs) <laughs> you might want to tone that down. The men are the funny ones, Erica. Women aren't funny. Don't yeah. out funny him. I know, it's fucked up. It's like this, yeah, yeah. it's this really fucked up, like, um, uh, patriarchy that's, like, running through my brain. That's like, the yeah. misogyny that's running through my brain. That's like, don't don't be too funny. Men don't like that. Don't be too clever. So it's um, it's it's like a little mm. tug of war happening in there where you I try to be bubbly and effervescent and vivacious and then five minutes later i shut down uh, it's very attractive <laughs> your bowling strikes my friend yeah, it's very attractive it works every time <laughs> oh okay so it's just like just malfunctioning cpu overload <laughs> yeah ah. yeah it's so awkward I, I sometimes i'm excellent and you know what when i'm excellent at flirting is when someone is out of my league Mm. Honestly, and I'm not kidding. I've been hit on sometimes by like very attractive men. Didn't Ken Marino hit on you yes, once? Yes, Ken yeah. Marino hit on me once. Back when he was like, Peak hang on, Ken, Ken Marino. Marino. Yeah. Him up. And it, yeah, <laughs> he's a, a comedian, American comedian. What would he have done that uh, if you saw Party Down? He was in Party Down. Yeah, he's like a big uh, in in like oh. American comedy project. He does lots of American TV. Yeah. Okay, carry on. Sorry. So he hit on you. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Right. So. Yeah, if someone really attractive hits on me, it's almost like this isn't actually happening. Yeah, this is I, gravy. Yeah, this is this is a this is a freebie. <laughs> uh, so I'm just gonna go with it, and I'm excellent in those situations. So like, if someone like a ten or mm-hmm. like hits on me, I a new version of me emerges that is like so much better. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe maybe it's like you're you're like you know what I've already won tonight because simply because you have hit on me. Yeah. So I can't like. Again, you get to that, What what's the worst that could happen place? Yeah. Like, I don't get to fuck Ken Marino, which I didn't think I even had the chance of literally 15 seconds ago. So but now here, here we are. Should I check in with Ken Marino's legal team before publishing this conversation? <laughs> I know. So. I, I'm sure he's married by now. Dear, yeah. Dear Ken Marino's wife, we did not fuck, so yeah. you, you're good. Um, but uh, I remember being with a girlfriend and she, like, a, a two incredibly attractive men started talking to us mm-hmm. and she shut down and she's very beautiful. She's tall, blonde. Like, yeah. I, there, there's so many things about her that like are like traditionally attractive and she shut down so hard. Like yeah. she could not believe that these two men were hitting on us. And I was like, this isn't happening. This isn't even <laughs> real. So I'm just going to go for it. And yeah. 
I'm having a hallucination right now. Let's yeah. have fun. I'm going to be my best self right now. <laughs> and, and so how did that end? You went home with the two of them and she was left at the bar. <laughs> no, unfortunately, neither. Uh, neither. Uh, Still neither. Lie. Just, <laughs> just say I did. <laughs> Anyway, my son is gorgeous. Yeah. Don't ask. Remember when I said you were super dull in I'll, the beginning of this? <laughs> I'll never I'll never tell anyone who his father is, but he looks exactly like Brad Pitt. Yeah. You know you know that heart song, um, All I Wanna Do Is Make Love to You? That's actually about that. It's night. about me. Oh my it's about God. me and that guy. I listened to that song recently. It's so problematic. It's so it they she 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 sexually <laughs> she under false yeah. pretenses gets this guy to impregnate her and then goes back and is like FYI, I'm married. You mean nothing to me, but this is your son. You can't have yes, That's what yes. that song's about? <laughs> yeah, listen to it. Oh, my God. I haven't listened to it in like a decade. Yeah, and like, and the, you, know, oh, you know, the whole moral panic about like exposing young people to gay characters and trans characters and everything. Mm-hmm. But like this is what I was listening to when I was a kid. Some woman who's just going off to like fuck some guy and then yeah. get pregnant and then never tell him about yeah. it. Wow. Remember that Ace of Base song? All that <laughs> is another baby. Is another baby? Like <laughs> it was I happening was sure. a lot in the nineties. Yeah, it was, it was a thing. I was like, that must have been a thing that happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! So there's all these kids who are like in their twenties now who just don't know their dads because because yeah. these... their mom was a a, a pop star <laughs> slash harlot. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, we are here to talk about Vlada. You wouldn't know that from the conversations that we've been having, but like, oh, that's right. what we're here Sorry. to do. Um, so before all these interviews, I like look online and try and find information about the bars. And the funny thing about mm. Vlada is that like all their socials are still there, but there's not at any point like, oh, wait, hey, everyone, we're closing. It's just kind of like stops at one point. Like, do yeah. you know anything about how it closed or what happened? We were talking with my husband about this and he said he thought there was a flood. Which, I mean, ice bar. I don't know. If- <laughs> I also, look, I don't want to be, I don't want to be um, stereotypical here. Uh-huh. But was it a front for the Russian mafia? <laughs> I mean- Is it possible that there's a Brighton Beach connection with yeah. Lada and that's why it like, <laughs> mysteriously flooded and closed? And, and you got to Russian mafia because of vodka. Well, yeah. because it was a Russian themed bar. Yeah. And vodka. <laughs> we are stereotyping okay. Russians, absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and, and he said he said he thought it was something to do with a flood. And then I I remember when it closed because I had, I had at one point in my life gone there so often that I was like, oh my god, a lot of clothes. Like it's a part of my history or whatever. And um, it I don't think anything went into the space. No, it must have. Something must be in the space by now. But like I remember we went there around there and it, it like it was still shut it was still Vlada but it had been shut down when we went mm. and walked past it and I was like oh that's where all those performances used to happen and like all that stuff and it was kind of sad but it moves so fast in New York too that like I feel like there's a you know I, I've been out of the bar game for a few years now um and is that is that a symptom of marriage yes yeah it's a symptom of I know, I know. We get very. (laughs) All of our single friends like to refer to us as boring, and honestly, they they have a point. (laughs) Um, It's a symptom of marriage. It's a symptom of literally like, if I married and I have an apartment and I have liquor here, (laughs) and I'm not like we, my husband and I do not have an open relationship. We are monogamous, so it's like we're not even out fishing for just fun for the night, (laughs) like. And then if I go to the bar, I can't really hear anybody because it's so loud and it's so hot and it's oh so packed. Oh my god, it you becomes, just got so old. I know. Right I am. A, I might as my. I might as well have a hump on my back at this point. <laughs> and and counter argument, mm-hmm. you won't see Velma from Scooby Doo lip syncing to Black Velvet in your house. That is true. That is what you lose. Mm-hmm. See what you're missing out on. I think what I have to do is put on Black Velvet and shove Erica onto <laughs> onto the stairway and see see what happens. <laughs> Is it triggered something in you? (laughs) Do you have any memories from Vlada or from your own queer scene that you want to share? Well, if you do, please get in touch. I want to create the biggest online record of people's memories and stories of queer clubbing. Go to lostspacespodcast.com and find the section Share a Lost Space and tell me what you got up to. 
You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as Lost Spaces Pod. Find out more about That Aged Well by visiting their website, thatagedwell.com, where you can also find their social details, and I will make sure to include them in the show notes. And of course, you can find their show and give it a listen on all good podcast platforms. Lost Spaces is not only a podcast, but a concept record as well. I have been writing songs about queer venues and the people who used to live their lives there and will be releasing songs over the next year. You can hear the first single, Well Grown Boys, which is also playing underneath my talking right now on all streaming platforms. If you like this episode, I would really appreciate if you subscribed, left a review on your podcast platform, or just told people who you think might be interested in giving it a little listen to. I am Kay Anderson, and you have been listening to Lost Spaces. <laughs>